kids, today we are going to be building a solar vehicle, the Sunny Zoon. As you may know, the cost of energy is steadily increasing. The price of electricity, natural gas, and especially gasoline keeps on going up. This rising cost of energy is one of the reasons that solar energy is so important. Let's take a few minutes and talk about energy just to be sure we understand the terms and the concepts. First of all, energy is the ability to do work. It takes energy for me to lift this brick. The amount of energy it takes depends upon the mass of the brick and how high I lift it. If I were to lift two bricks of equal mass, it would take twice as much energy. Or if I lifted one brick twice as high, it would take twice as much energy. As scientists look at it, there are two forms of energy, kinetic and potential. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. A ball in motion has kinetic energy. The amount of kinetic energy is equal to one half of the mass of the object times the velocity of the object squared. The other type of energy is potential energy. Potential energy is just that, the potential to provide energy. Potential energy is typically termed the energy of position, which will be the mass of the object times the force of gravity times the height. This brick has potential energy due to its position. Because of its height, it has the potential for gravity to pull it toward the ground, converting its potential energy to kinetic energy. Objects such as roller coasters can have both potential and kinetic energy. At any point on the roller coaster ride, the total energy of the roller coaster will be the amount of kinetic energy plus the amount of potential energy. Today, we are going to be dealing with a way to produce energy from light. To do this, we will be using a solar panel otherwise known as a photovoltaic cell. You're probably familiar with the dry cell, commonly known as a battery. Batteries have the potential to provide energy in the form of electricity, if something is hooked up to them. For instance, if we have this flashlight, the batteries within the flashlight have the potential to produce electricity when the circuit is connected by turning on the switch. Likewise, Solar cells have the potential to produce electricity if they're connected to something and if sufficient light is shining on them. The word photovoltaic can be broken into two parts, photo, which means light, and voltaic, which means voltage or electric potential. Therefore, a photovoltaic cell converts light energy directly into electric energy. Photovoltaic cells, or solar cells, are constructed of layers of silicon crystals. Pure silicon is a non-conductor. Its electrons are held tightly within its crystalline structure. Electrons are negatively charged particles that typically reside in the outer portion of an atom. In a solar cell, the silicon layers are doped with impurities, often phosphorus and the impurities allow the flow of electrons under certain conditions. One doped layer of the cell will have available electrons and is called an N-type layer. The N stands for negative, which is the charge it has when extra electrons are available. In the other layer, the silicon is doped with a different impurity, boron, one that causes it to be an electron receptor. So, we have one part of the solar cell that has electrons available and another part that has places for the electrons to go. What a combination! However, due to the nature of the junction between the two layers, a small electrical field of energy keeps electrons from rushing across the junction. However, if sunlight hits our solar cell, the energy from the light frees both an electron and an electron receptor to move across the electrical field at the p-n junction. This causes an imbalance in the charges in each layer, 
and if a conductor is connected to the layers, the electrons will flow back to their original layer. This flow of electrons is the electricity produced by the solar cell. The amount of electricity produced is determined by the size of the cell, the chemical composition of the layers, and the amount of light hitting the cell. Now that we know how solar cells work, let's get busy and build the Sunny Zoom solar car. The Sunny Zoom kit comes with the following. A small solar cell, a motor, a plastic motor mount, a corrugated plastic chassis, two axles, four bushings, two wide rear wheels, two narrow front wheels, a gear font, adhesive tabs, and a car body cutout. First, we will detach the four bushings from their font and insert one in the second and eighteenth holes on each edge of the chassis. As we look down at the chassis, we need to be sure the bushings are directly across from each other. On the gear font, we will find the gear marked I. It will have 40 teeth and will have a 1 8 inch diameter hole in the center of the gear. We will remove this gear from the font. We will also find gear G or gear N on the font and will remove either of these gears. Now we will inspect the gears. If there are plastic burrs or flashing left between the teeth of the gears, have your teacher, unless otherwise instructed, remove the burrs with a sharp craft knife like this. Kids, be very careful if you use the craft knife. It is very sharp. Always use a cutting motion that will cause the knife to move away from you as it cuts. Our large gear, or gear I, is the drive gear. We will carefully press one of the axles into the center of this drive gear. The axle needs to be fully inserted into the gear and then protrude about one fourth inch beyond the gear on the other side. We will press the one fourth inch of the protruding axle into one of the wide rear wheels. We will insert the free end of this axle, gear, and wheel assembly through the bushings and chassis at the 18th row of the chassis. While keeping the axle, gear, and wheel assembly in place, we will press the free end of the axle into the other wide rear wheel. We need to be careful to not insert the wheel too far onto the axle. If we do, the wheel and gear will rub against the chassis and slow our car down. We should try to leave a small amount of space between the wheel and chassis so that the wheel and axle assembly turns freely. Let's find the other axle and press one end of it into one of the narrow front wheels. We will place the wheel and axle assembly through the bushings and chassis at the second row of the chassis. We will press the last wheel on the free end of the axle. Again, we need to be sure the wheel and axle assembly spins freely. The smaller gear, gear G or gear N, is called a pinion gear. We will carefully push the pinion gear onto the shaft of the motor. Now we can snap the motor into the motor mount like this. We will position the motor so that the pinion gear is on top of and engaged with the drive gear. While keeping the pinion gear engaged with the drive gear, we slowly rotate the drive gear so that it moves the motor and pinion gear forward until the motor mount rests upon the chassis. The drive gear and the pinion gear should still mesh, but not too tightly. We will practice the placement of the motor and pinion gear on the drive gear and rotating the drive gear until the motor mount is in the correct position. Once we are confident we can get the placement of the motor mount correctly, we will remove the paper backing from the motor mount adhesive and position the motor mount as we have practiced. So with the adhesive ready to stick the motor mount in place, we carefully engage the pinion gear and drive gear 
and slowly rotate the drive gear until we move the motor mount into its position on the chassis. Using our solar panel, we will attach the alligator clip from the black wire of the panel to the motor terminal that has a small round dot next to it. The alligator clip from the red wire will attach to the other motor terminal. If needed, we can carefully rotate the motor in the motor mount so that the alligator clips will not interfere with the placement of the solar panel on top of the motor. We can now place an adhesive tab on the back of the solar panel to attach it to the motor. To find the best location for this tab, we will place the panel in position on top of the motor with the bottom of the panel about one centimeter from the front end of the chassis. We will note where the motor and panel are in contact and place an adhesive tab in that location on the back of the panel. We will remove the paper covering from the adhesive and press the panel and motor together. Next, we will use our scissors to cut out the car body. We will cut along the red lines around the outside of the body and along the inside rectangle as well. Once we have the body cut out, we will fold the body at the yellow lines like this. On the white side of the cut out car body, we will place an adhesive tab on each of the folded tabs, one at the front and one at the back of the car body. We will position and fit the car body over the solar panel and chassis. When positioned correctly, we will remove the paper covering on the adhesive tabs and press them into place. We are finished with our Sunny Zoom car. Now all we need is some sunshine. Let's see how this thing runs. Wow, look at it go. If you don't happen to have sunshine when you're finished building your Sunny Zoom car, you can use a 100 watt bulb and a trouble light to provide the light energy you need to propel your car. If your car happened to go backwards, it's okay. Just switch the position of the two alligator clips on the motor. You should be moving full speed ahead in no time. Remember, it is the energy of the sun that is supplying power to the motor by way of the solar panel. Think about the challenges that you might face if you were asked to build a full-size solar car that could carry a person. Today, scientists and engineers are working on these challenges so that we can harness a portion of the sun's energy and put it to work. Kids, I hope you've enjoyed building the Sunny Zoom car. Until next time, we will see you real soon. <laughs>